So here is a Bell South CI7112 Visual Director. And this is one of the more premium upscale color ID units um, for a couple of reasons. One is it supports call waiting deluxe, which I've demonstrated on here in a previous video. Um, but the other thing is that it supports some color ID parameters um, for MDMF for type 1 color ID that most color ID units uh, do not support. So for example, you know, this AT&T uh, phone has a built-in color ID unit. Um, this is a CL2909, pretty basic. And uh, it's got, you know, your date and time, your number and your 15 character name. If it's more than 15 characters, it freaks out. Um, but otherwise, there's not much um, that most color ID units display. Um, what many people might not know is that there are actually more parameters in that, and that you can get them even on analog CPE. And this one does support uh, more than just the basic parameters. So two that we're going to look at here, one is redirecting information. So the caller ID unit can tell you if a call has been forwarded, and if so, what type of forwarding was used. So call forwarding uh, busy, for example, would be one, um, don't answer, and there are several other things that are in the specification that can be used. The other one is the call qualifier, which is basically equivalent to long distance call. That's the only qualifier that there is in the standard. And I think this might have been used more in Canada than the United States. But the unit does support it if you sort of look at the caller ID unit very carefully and you can see some of the things that are not currently active. But on the left, lower left you can see LDC and that is it, it will light up or it will display LDC rather if um, that particular parameter is set if the call qualifier is present and this would have been more useful when people did not receive caller ID for long distance calls you would only get caller ID on local calls in your local calling area possibly only on the same switch I'm not sure um, nowadays, you pretty much always get call ID, um, but, you know, a couple decades ago, seeing out of area um, or unknown would have been much more common. And I believe the idea here is that it would tell you if it was a long distance call, so they, you know, they wouldn't know who was calling, it would be an unknown call, but it would say long distance, so you would know it's at least a long distance call. Even though you don't know who it is, you know it's long distance. So, um... I guess that could prime people appropriately for the call they were going to answer. Um, the other thing that's worth mentioning that I figured out in my testing is that for for some reason, I'm not sure why, because it doesn't really make any sense, but it only seems to work on type 1 or on-hook caller ID. So type 2 caller ID, call waiting. Um, you can send those parameters, but it doesn't seem to process them. So it, only wants to receive them and do something with them if it's in an idle state. So for demonstration purposes, um, I should probably mention, so um, another factor, so I'm guessing most people have probably not seen either of these because um, I'm, I'm guessing that most equipment today does not even support sending these parameters, let alone receiving them. Um, so if you had this on an ET, for instance, like this one down here, uh, you're kind of at the mercy of what the ET firmware is set up to do for on-hook caller ID. And because it's only going to work for on-hook caller ID, um, you basically need to have access to whatever is generating the FSK spell for that, which with an ETA um, isn't as easy. The good news is I have a channel bank here available and I've got this connected to that so I've added some capabilities to asterisk and um, basically allow these parameters to now be sent on 
uh, calls. So these parameters can actually be used just like they were originally intended. So for demonstration purposes, I've just sort of hard-coded it in so that it will always send the parameter for call forwarding busy, and it will always send the call qualifier parameter. Um, and I'll, I'll work on, you know, actually making that usable in the future, but for now it's sort of neat to see that it actually works as it was intended to. So now that uh, Call Waiting Deluxe I have on my Switch, and I also have support for long distance call and redirecting info, um, I can actually get pretty much the full functionality out of this particular unit. Most people just use these as a basic call ID unit, but here I can actually really use all the capabilities that it was designed to offer to end users. The other thing I'll mention is there is a parameter for the DNS, the, the dialed number basically, and um, I played with that a little bit. Um, it didn't seem to have any impact on this particular unit, but when I sent the DNS to this phone over here, then we would run into a problem where it would actually show that as the caller ID as opposed to the actual number that called, which is not right. So um, I think that seems to confuse um, different CPE. The long distance qualifier and the redirecting info are just obviously ignored by this since it doesn't support those, which is how it's supposed to work is that if CP doesn't support particular parameters, it should just silently ignore them. Um, and that's what happens with these two. So anyways, for a demonstration, and we'll call this uh, phone from over here. Okay. And there we go. So a couple of things you see, it's showing that extension to a seven call then and you'll notice it rotates through and also shows that this is a, a busy call forward so it's got call fd busy and then for other things it might say you know don't answer it's, it's all in the manual the other thing is towards the left there you can see that ldc is now lit up which most people have probably never seen on these units before but that's telling me that well, of course it's not really a long distance call it's from right over here um, but you sort of get the idea that now you can use that um, to signal that it's a long distance call or you could even I guess use that parameter for anything else you desired because it is called a call qualifier but that's actually what it was intended for and even though we have color ID information and I believe LDC was really only intended to be used when color ID information wasn't available I don't really see why you can't use it even if Caller ID is available. I guess it's nice to know that somebody's long distance. Um, my philosophy is more, it's there, so I'm gonna use it. So um, so that's really all there is to, to this. It's um, pretty nice that uh, you can do this. Again, for the moment, it's really only possible um, if you're able to control the FSK that gets sent on hook to the CPE, which you can do with asterisk if you have uh, a channel bank and you're using body. So that's how this is set up here.